Ladies and gentlemen, today is Wednesday, March 5th, 2014, and this is The Can Kale Show, episode 173. I'm your host, Keenan Lafferty, and today we're going to be jumping back into our Diablo 3 marketing art part 6, I believe this is? Yes, and we are working on it for the upcoming release of Reaper of Souls. And we are featuring the monks here, kicking various goat men and uh, blinding these demon thingies on the side here. And I have been doing a little series that I like to call From Beginning to End, where I showcase my entire process, even the boring parts, it is so boring because you guys asked for it, so I am showing you everything, absolutely everything that goes in my process. Hopefully you can learn something at home, try it out for yourself, see if it works for you. See if it works for you. So we are going to be jumping back into what we were working on yesterday via time lapse. Go! So... Yes, uh, yesterday we left off with me talking about something that I'm going to execute right here in the bottom right. And that is the importance of having cohesiveness with all of the characters within your piece. And this monk girl over here is supposed to be casting this blinding light type thing. And originally, yesterday's uh, show, actually you can see right here, see how this goat man is just kind of chilling there? He's kind of hunched over and he's like, Ugh, just doing the regular thing, right? He's not reacting at all to the blinding light coming out from this girl, right? It's freaking blinding this guy over here. This guy's just taking it. Must have, I don't know, he must be already blind or something. So I decided the first thing that I was going to do was go ahead and erase him, or rather duplicate his layer, you know, in case I wanted to go back. And I decided to start playing around with um, the this goat man in the side, basically like shielding his face, basically reacting to the girl monk. And what we got was something absolutely awesome. And I kind of lucked out because it basically just kind of fell together. And yeah, yeah, I really liked the way that it looked. And it didn't, it really isn't that. I want you guys to pay attention to really how I allow like the, the light and shadow to basically create the body. I'm like, I'm sculpting it. I'm exact, I'm basically just laying down almost all of the shadow and then like sculpting the light back into it. So, um, yeah, this is really the way that I like to work, especially when you're dealing with stuff on the side. It doesn't really need to have a lot of detail. This is really just like, after this is all done, this will be like one of the last things that you'll look at because it's the side of the picture. It's the bottom corner of the picture. I don't want people looking there first. So there's not going to be a lot of contrast. It's more just going to be one of those things, an extra detail. You're like, oh, that's so cool that he's reacting to uh, the girl doing her awesome spell type thing. And this guy is definitely reacting to getting kicked in the goat stomach. Yes. And that makes us very, very happy. When in doubt, put sticks in the background for a war scene, and it makes it look cool. Spears, battle standards, just plain old sticks. Doesn't matter. It just makes everything look a lot cooler. And I'm just kind of refining things. Basically, today is refinement. That's all I'm doing is I'm going back in and I'm refining things. Speaking of that... We're going to be doing a little bit of refinement back here because this is where I want Malfail to be kind of overarching everything, kind of like the foreboding presence around them. I don't know exactly how to put it, but you know what I mean. So let's go ahead and get into that. Um, oh, I think I actually left this thing running for a little while without doing anything. So let's go ahead and skip forward. There we go. All right. So... Yes, I'm just kind of darkening everything, just kind of getting an overall general feel. It helps to darken the values of the things that are closer to you and then work in lighter values as things go back because they're more obscured by the atmosphere. So we're just going to go ahead and sculpt in our good friend Malthael here and watch very closely, watch very closely from what I started with right here, right? See, see all these lines? I'm really starting to understand a little bit more about my process. It's funny. Me actually showing it to you and recording it and then watching it back and explaining it is really helping me to figure out kind of what, what makes me tick, what makes my, my style work. And I really think what it comes down to is I lay out these lines first. It's finding the flow, finding the flow that is going to be happening within that character and then expanding upon that, laying down some values and almost sculpting it out. Watch, watch how I... <coughs> <laughs> cough on my own spit and then I'll actually see I draw on these lines then I kind of darken it all in and then I start sculpting out the light that's basically my my freaking ah 
Ah, I can't talk today. Uh, I'm so stressed. I'm so stressed. Okay, can I just... We need to take a break for a second. We need to take a break because I need to talk to you guys about something. I am super, not necessarily stressed. I'm just really anxious about going to, for those of you who know, I'm going down to Sacramento tomorrow for Wizard World Comic Con. And I'm going to be exhibiting and representing Emma as well as some of the work I've done for League of Legends while I'm down there. And I am like super like nervous and anxious and excited because I've never actually been to Sacramento before. So I do apologize if my if I'm mumbling and stumbling over my words today, but that is the reason why. And um, yeah, yeah, that's the reason why. Back to the art. So yeah, I just lay in the values, sculpt it back out, and voila, we have Malthael on his own layer, kind of messing around a little bit with the uh, with the size of him and all that stuff. I really need to stop freaking pulling up this window too. Yikes. I need to stop doing that. Or maybe I need to just set the camera region so it doesn't pick that up. At any rate, something we can deal with later. So, um, yeah, but I'm really, really digging the way that this is turning out. Really, really digging this. Um, in fact, there's, there's something I want to touch on with that. Something I want to touch on with that. Like, you guys have heard me talk about my process and how I like to take breaks. I like to take proper breaks to kind of take a step back and really look at the piece as a whole, make sure I am still hitting all of my main points. Like, when I first started this, one of the first things that I did was I wrote down all of the things that I wanted this piece to achieve. If you go back to the very first episode, part one, my main goal for this is to, let's see, uh, keywords for this for this piece are composition, control of color, and focal points, unique ideas, and a clever story, right? And I'm always thinking about these things when I take a break and walk away from it. But you can't see it. It's almost like you can't see the picture when you're the one in the frame. And taking a break allows you to step out of the frame, look back at the picture, and say, look, this is what I'm setting out to, to accomplish. Am I hitting these key words? And my answer to that is yes. I think that I'm really hitting it quite well because I am taking breaks. And um, yeah, every every piece that I do, there always comes this point where I, I look at it and I'm like, ooh, I don't know if this is going to work. Oh, man. And then I start getting like super stressed out and like trying a bunch of things like haphazardly trying to fix and find the solutions to the problems that are happening within the piece, whether it's composition or that guy's anatomy looks weird or this face looks, you know, stupid. And as soon as I take a break and take a step back, it seems like the solutions all just, they come to me literally within 15 seconds of taking a break, of saying, okay, I'm not going to work anymore. I'm not going to work anymore. And then I'll back my seat up and get ready to walk away. And I'll be like, no, wait a second. And then I got it, right? I got the solution. And it all comes from just switching your mind off, like intentionally saying, I'm going to switch my mind off and try to take a break. You'll instantly start getting the solutions. And it's good to just like either write them down, like, hey, this is what I need to do. Uh, what I'm doing right here is I'm fixing this hand. You, you can see me switching back and forth with that hand. And I'm refining these hands. And the first hand that I actually drew on this monk girl, it looked a little bit too like manly. It looked too manly. In fact, this might be the one that I'm refining that looks a little too manly. Um, I don't know. But anyway, so I went back to the original sketch and I was like, I like something about this sketch a little bit more. And I think it was the fact that it just had some more angles on the knuckle. So that way it still looked kind of feminine, but it had like a cool, like jagged edge to it. And I thought that that was really cool. Kind of wanted to mirror what I did with these fingers. Like feminine fingers, I usually like to bring them to points, whereas manly fingers, I like to cut, basically cut them off, make them squared off. Kind of like uh, Wreck-It Ralph is a good example of that. So, and to finish up as we move into the finalization of these lines, we are taking care of our good friend Goatman. Goatman, I think I will call him Fred. Don't forget the piece of spit. It's totally flying off his lip there. <laughs> I cannot wait to see this color. I think it's going to be really, really cool. Um, and yeah, um, I, I really think what I like most about this is that there's, like, I can see the piece as it's done, right? I mean, the values and the black and whites, those those already get a lot of the, the storytelling done, right? But I can see it just like with the colors and everything. Like, I think it's going to look like a really, really awesome piece. It's going gonna, it's gonna to look really good. And um, it's going to have basically everything that I set down, right? Because I had a definite planned goal from the very beginning. 
And it, it's kind of like saying you're going to sail to this faraway land, this faraway island. You need to have a map and you need to set your sail in the, the boat from the very beginning to get to where you want to go. Because if you just kind of jump in the boat and be like, eh, let's see where it takes us, let's see where the sea takes us, it's going to freaking take you into a giant whirlpool of death and suck you down in the middle of Earth, and then you will be boiled alive by the molten core. But enough of that. Let's go ahead and get into this and let's talk about some of the things that um, that I feel that the piece is working well with because I set my sail early. Okay? So let's go ahead and just make a new layer over top of this and let's call it notes. Okay, so the first thing that I feel is working pretty well with this is the composition and the flow of the piece because once I lay in the colors this is going to help it a lot more but already you can see that a lot of your attention is drawn here and here, right? And there's flow that's happening. There's flow that's running right through these characters. It's going right up like that. But then notice how this goat man, you follow it right back in, brings you right back in. This guy could technically lead you off the page, but I'm hoping that because his eyes are covered, usually wherever like a person's eyes are looking, it has a tendency, like you will look in that same direction. So if you could see this guy's eyes and they were looking that way, you might have a tendency to get trapped kind of within here. But um, his hair kind of leads up and, and then kind of barely just curves back this way. So maybe it'll bring you back into Malathiel's wings, which as well goes like this, right back down to their face. This, right back down to this guy. So you can see everything is just like revolving around this area. Even this negative space, this is helping to communicate Negative space is so important, and I talked to you guys about this yesterday. Negative space is so important when you are trying to create uh, clear silhouettes. And um, yeah, just, just make sure that there's areas of high detail and high, or areas of rest, okay? High detail and rest. So see, there's all this detail happening within this character here. And then you have this really nice area of rest right here, and you know, you could even argue like right here, okay? like here, basically in all the key points where I want the silhouettes to stand out the most, there's areas, look, it's just white space, white space, low, low contrast white space. And this comes in really, really handy with creating your, the clarity in a piece. Because originally I had the idea of like, oh yeah, there's going to be like demons all throughout here, and they're, yeah, they're going to be like angry eyes, right? And then they got these teeth, and there's like pitchforks and all that stuff. And see how already, just from that, you squint your eyes, and now it starts to kind of blend in, like all this area starts to blend into one big blob. But when you take that away and say, oh wait, no, she's casting this blinding light spell, so it makes sense to have a lot of light back there. Now you squint your eyes and you see this very clear shape, very clear silhouette. And it will only be, it will only be uh, pronounced more once I lay in the color, because that's also going to help it out a lot. Notice how I even kept Malthale very low contrast. I didn't make him the same color as them because watch what happens when I do. Watch what happens when I make Malthale the same value, I guess, as uh, the characters in front. See, now, again, you start to lose a lot of the clarity. A lot of the clarity seems to get lost. But as you make him a brighter, a brighter value, now you can, again, see the characters. All right. All right. And the other thing that I really like about pieces that I try to incorporate in, my, in like all of my work is story. I think it's really important to capture your audience, capture your viewer with an initial almost like a burst of energy, right? Something really interesting for them to look at. In this case, it's, it's the girl, right? And this guy, right? But oh wait, but the guy's like kicking this dude. Oh, that's awesome. He's kicking him right out of the frame. And what's this guy doing over here? Oh, he's like shielding his eyes. Oh, she's casting like this spell, and it's like it's like this blinding light spell. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, and who's this guy back here? Oh, he looks like a bad guy. He looks like some sort of foreshadowing thingy. So anyway, <laughs> so those are the kinds of things that I think make a piece really great. And those are the kinds of pieces that I enjoy. So naturally, I try to incorporate those things into my own work. So I hope that you guys are getting some good value out of this, some good education by taking a close look at my style. Uh, I'm going to be going out of town, as you know, to Sacramento for Comic-Con throughout the weekend. I really wanted to try to make another episode for Thursday. Unfortunately, I just can't do that right now. But the good news is we're going to be jumping into color. We're going to be masking the characters and coloring them as soon as I get back 
on Monday evening, maybe. <laughs> oh man, it all depends on how how good I feel like after the con. And if I can make a prediction, I'm probably going to be so tired after the con because it's three days. It's literally like three days, and I'm just like I'm sitting behind a booth, but I'm like selling stuff, I'm like talking to people, and passing out business cards, and networking, and eating way too much pizza from questionable food vendors. But um, <laughs> um, at any rate, this thing has to be done by the middle of next week. So we're going to make it happen. All righty. And I'll keep you guys posted. I'll keep you guys posted. If anything, like you guys are going to be getting a lot of content over the next couple of days next week. So if you're not, you'll get your color piece and you'll get to see the whole process of coloring. And the really cool thing is, like I've said, once the cool thing about my uh, my process now that I use is that once I get the picture to this point, dropping in the colors behind the lines and then kind of valuing thing and putting a little bit of rendering on the clothing and the materials is all you really need to do. My, my new process, like this is probably about 95% of the work. The colors are just, it's little, it makes coloring fun. That's really what this does. There's no more, there's no more guesswork in the color. You just kind of slap stuff in and like, oh yeah, that looks good. Uh, that's good, and then you just kind of light it the way that you want it, the way that you, you see it in your head, and then it just works. It just works because a lot of the stuff has been taken care of in our line. See how there's just like these values already added in there? And this is going to do a lot of our work for us. And then we color the lines, a little bit of overpainting, and then we're done. All righty, people. So we're going to call that good. Thank you for joining me on YouTube. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Ken Lafferty. I'll see you guys early next week. The exact day is to be determined, but I will keep you updated on the Facebook. Please click the link down below if you'd like to stay updated, as well as the Twitter and all that stuff. Till next time, you guys take care. See ya.